Hi, I am Julie Roca, and you have joined our podcast, Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. I talk to people all the time that um, are seniors that may have just uh, cashed in on the, the market with the housing market recently, and they sold their big, beautiful home that they raised their children in, and um, they don't need all that space. And now they're talking about options for after the, the sale of that home. And they're wondering if they need to buy a townhouse or if it might be time to look at other options, senior living options. So today I brought my friend Wayne Vincent from the village at Gainesville. Um, the village at Gainesville has a huge independent living uh, community as well as other things. So I wanted to bring him on specifically to talk about these things today. So welcome, Wayne. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So right before the camera was, went on, we were actually talking and we missed this great story. What brought you into healthcare and into doing what you do now? So this, yeah, the story that we were telling um, when I was pulling into the parking lot here, it brought back memories <laughs> um, almost 25 years ago to the day. Um, I believe I started uh, in late September um, across the parking lot uh, for mm -hmm. a company called Interim Healthcare. I had taken a part-time job uh, from noon to six. Um, the, the gentleman that was in that position was moving away actually to take care of a, a family member. Um, and we knew each other and he asked me if I'd be interested in something like that because he knew I was going, was working towards pursuing additional degrees from the University of Florida. And I was like, well, yeah, you know, noon to six, I can sleep in. I can yeah, still go out sure. at night. <laughs> um, and my responsibility at this job was to help scheduling of, we had a contract with Elder Care of Alachua County and we would mm -hmm. help schedule their Medicaid waiver program. Yeah. Um, and so I got to interact with the residents uh, or the, the, the residents of the, the homes that they were in. Um, and coordinate that care with our staff members. And I was just fascinated with the interactions of not only those people out there receiving the care, but, I mean, like I was telling you, we're talking 25 years ago. Yeah. Um, and these people were going into, again, Medicaid waiver, so you're not talking about the, the most right. pristine homes mm -hmm. in, in the area. Um, and everybody was so grateful, and everybody was so thankful, and everybody loved their job. And we're talking about homemakers and companions and home health aides that were making at that time $5, five dollars, five twenty five. Wow, an that's hour. wow, that's great. And they just always came into the office with a just a positive attitude. And I was like, you know, I know I went to school to be this, but I what did I you really, go to school to be? So I actually <laughs> have a degree in history and education. Yep. So um, my ambitions were to continue that pursuit. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully land in a college or university setting and become a baseball coach. There so. you go. Okay. So all that prepared you to be where I'm at today. A marketing director <laughs> in <laughs> one of our largest independent living, um, assisted living and memory support communities in Gainesville. So, you know, one of the things I'll add about that is, you know, I think having that background and then tying on the, the 25 years mm -hmm. of experience, you know, I truly, you know, I know I'm a director of sales and marketing, but I really view what we do as a, an advisor or counseling type yeah. position. Yeah. You know, I really don't feel like we sell uh, anything other than mm -hmm. the idea that um, this could be an option for you at this time in your life. Right. But, uh, you know, sometimes going into those conversations, you know, drilling down with the family and the prospect to, to get the honest truth of, yeah. of what's going on and realizing that sometimes that answer is not you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. having yeah. the network and the resources, people like you, um, that if we're not the answer, um, mm -hmm. you know, we know where we can point you. And so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love working with the village as often as I can. Sometimes we do place there and sometimes you're saying, Hey, we need you to help this person. They're not a good fit here, but we need you to help this person find a good fit for them. So I always appreciate that. But I really wanted to talk to you because, um, we were talking about, 
the housing market has been off the chain. That it uh, I don't know if it's COVID. It's probably a whole bunch of other things that has really made it seem worthwhile to a lot of our seniors to go ahead and sell the family home that probably was larger. Maybe they raised a bunch of kids in and things like that. And so they said, hey, you know, while the market's really booming, I'm going to go ahead and sell. And now they're saying, all right, what do I do now? Um, should I choose to buy another townhome or, or should I look at other options? And I think with your background, your education and your all the different things that you've done over the last 25 years, I think you are the right person to talk to about this. So I, I would agree 100 percent that the real estate market has really driven uh, a lot of occupancy towards not just the village at Gainesville, but mm-hmm. to a, probably our, our other places around the area. Um, because it is an opportunity. Um, you know, I, I think you watch the news and you hear the, the rumors out there of, you know, when's this bubble going to burst? And, yeah. you know, if you go yeah. back to 2007, 2008, when that bubble burst, um, it took 10, 12, 15 years for it to recover. Yeah. Um, and so if I'm somebody sitting here in my late 60s, early 70s, um, and mm-hmm. that bubble burst, um, you know, I would be into my mid to late 80s, potentially, before, yeah, for yeah. it to come back around. So that's given pause to thought for a lot of people to consider what their options are at this time in their life. And, you know, uh, you know, working with these families, you know, I, I often talk about, you know, you hear the thing like, I don't want to give up my independence. Right. right. Yes. I hear that um, all the time. And, and I'm like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> um, because, you know, a place like ours. Um, Mm -hmm. you're not losing any independence. And I often tell people, um, you're gaining freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, And that freedom uh, is the ability to do what you want today, not what you need to do today. Yep. Um, And that's a huge, huge difference. And, you know, when you go and you purchase something, you know, you're you're taking full ownership of that responsibility of what that entails. And and that's everything Mm -hmm. from liability uh, to day-to-day maintenance, uh, mm-hmm. to major repairs. Um, and so, you know, coming to a rental community like ours uh, gives you that flexibility and freedom uh, that you don't have those extra stressors in your life. Yeah, yeah. And I get the the, the kickbacks sometimes that I get as well. I mean, it's so much more expensive than if I were to go and um, buy myself a townhouse. Mm, but you and I both know otherwise, if you sit down with paper and pen and you factor in some of those costs, right? So Absolutely. you're talking um, to own, let's say you're owning a townhome, right? You own your townhome. Do you have taxes on that to pay? Correct. Do you have insurance to pay? Correct. Do you have um, electricity? Um, do you have cable? Uh, so what are some of the other things that you see that you guys cover the cost so that they're not having to pay that? Yeah, I mean, you know, for our community uh, and most in, in what we do, uh, whether you, you live with us or, or some other place, you know, a lot of those costs are embedded. Um, so mm-hmm. we are covering things like your electric bill, your cable bill, yep. your Internet uh, to some level. Um, you also have housekeeping, mm-hmm. um, maintenance. Um, yep, I, yep. if you don't mind, I'll share a story. <laughs> um, yeah, you please. know, I had a lady that I've been working with for some time, uh, last October and we sat down and, and she kind of got to a point where she knew what apartment style she wanted, mm-hmm. but she just wasn't ready. And, you know, then I asked the, the question, I'm curious, what does ready look like? Yes. You know, of course, you know, sometimes they'll give you an answer and sometimes they dance around it. Um, but, uh, you know, we had agreed to, after the first of the year, we would communicate again um, mm-hmm. and just kind of see if we were at that ready point yet. Right. And that first week of January, I got a phone call from her. Um, her uh, furnace uh, went out two days before Christmas. Oh. Um, and so think about that. Um, yeah. One, uh, since COVID, getting things done mm-hmm. uh, per, uh, on a personal level, whether it's electricity, uh, AC, plumbing, 
um, it can take weeks. Um, yeah. And, and additionally, uh, think about this past Christmas. Um, I had an ice uh, farm in my backyard because I turned on the sprinklers because it was oh, yeah, cause below it was 30 really degrees for beautiful. about four days yeah. in a row. Yeah. So, you know, this lady had to go out to, I believe she told me she went to Dollar General and she went to uh, Family Dollar oh, and wow. Walmart and had to buy space heaters for her whole home mm-hmm. um, because she couldn't find someone to come out. It's the holidays. It's already yep. a, a staffing shortage in those industries as well. Whereas, and so she picked up the phone, she said, I'm ready, <laughs> and told me that story. Whereas, you know, if she was already there and that happened, not only do we have a, a maintenance team that, that delivers those services on our campus, uh, but if for some reason we couldn't, we have furnished apartments that we would just move somebody to, to allow them to continue doing what they want to do while yeah. we handle whatever is going right. on in their apartment. So. You know, it's, it's those stressors that when you purchase something, again, going back to what I said earlier, you know, you take ownership of all those responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you move to a place like ours, uh, you're going to relinquish those yeah. to us. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, we're not going to talk about your assisted living and your memory support options. I really wanted to bring you in to talk more about the independent living aspect of things because people say, oh, senior living. They associate senior living a lot of times with a nursing home. Correct. And wow, that is just not the flavor of an independent <clears throat> living community. And so, you know, I had this conversation this morning with a family. I was telling you earlier that uh, I w- was working with that came in and toured. And, you know, we get this story. I, I should have mm-hmm. done this a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I wish. And this is the adult children talking. You know, and, and I sat down with them and I told them, you know, you got to think about where your parents come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there were no villages at Gainesville uh, when they were your age, when they were in their 30s and their 40s. Right. right? That's there was true. A, there was no assisted living mm-hmm. back then. Um, so the only thing they know is that nursing, nursing. home, skilled yeah. nursing. Um, and so that's why it's important. I tell people have check marks going off at certain points in your life that you should prepare for. Um, And I tell people, you know, when you qualify for Medicare, that 65, Mm -hmm. start, start researching, start, start going, start encouraging them to, to go out and investigate what's available. Yes. Um, And the more you do that ahead of time, you know, when it comes a time to Mm -hmm. make a decision Mm -hmm. like you're talking about, There's a comfort level there, and that stigma is gone because, you know, you even think about in other industries, what we knew back then uh, is night and day to what we know now. Exactly. And healthcare is no different Mm -hmm. um, through technology, through advancements, through learning. Yeah. Um, And and hearing those stories, uh, we have become, it's cliche now because I think everybody uses it, but You know, our retirement community is basically like a cruise ship. And who doesn't like going on a cruise? Exactly. That's how I relate it all the time. It's basically like a cruise ship for our seniors. Um, And you can show up with a walker or even a wheelchair sometimes as long as you've got the ability to handle um, what you need to in your apartment on your own because this we are talking independent living here. Uh, But you got your meals provided. Mm -hmm. You've got um, and in your community, I mean, you've got like five different places to go and eat. So you can either do fine dining or a bistro with um, Starbucks in it. Um, you guys, your seniors are constantly doing really fun stuff. I saw a trip to Epcot and things like yeah. that. So, I mean, it's independent living can still lead to a very active lifestyle, but you don't have all the stresses and all the headaches of, you know, having to get the furnace fixed or having to uh, make sure that you're paying the taxes on time. And all these things are just kind of taken away. Yeah, and there's a lot of different layers to that conversation. You know, Mm -hmm. I have a resident that oftentimes will come to some of our community events there, and she's been at the the village now for about 16 years, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, And she talks about not only does she have peace of mind, knowing that she's at a Mm -hmm. place where uh, she can age with dignity in place, but her children know she's at a place a safe place. One, I believe, lives out on the West Coast. Another one lives up North. 
Um, and so, you know, it's not just, you know, the resident, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's the entire nucleus of the family and, and having that yep. peace of mind yep. that, you know, they're, they're in good hands mm-hmm. um, and, and they're going to be taken care of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's important to go and, um, and tour. So Absolutely. I think that it's important to go tour the facility, tour the campus, see what it feels like to you, see, you know, how does the transportation work? Where is the dining hall? Is it easy to get to? Are they serving the kinds of things that I might want to eat? Um, again, the village has so many op- options and opportunities for things like dining and activities and things like that. But if you're not in a place where you have a village of Gainesville, there's still probably an independent living somewhere near you that you can look into and see if this is a good option for you. It is, you know, and I tell people, even, you know, here locally, don't just come to us, Mm -hmm. you know, do your research, go see, because, you know, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, we might not be a good fit for you. You know, we're 104 acres. We have five dining venues. You know, we have a, a lot of things on our campus. And to some, that that's might too be much. too much. It, and absolutely. that's okay. I've um, had a couple people tour there, mm-hmm. and they and they and that is the reaction that they have. And then I've had other people tour, and they're like, oh, there's so much great stuff going Correct. on. <laughs> Correct. So. So, yeah, it's different strokes for different folks, but independent living is really a good option for our seniors out there today. And, you know, for for most independent living, you know, healthcare type communities like ours, you know, that where you have other disciplines on that campus, we we still look through things through a a clinical prism. So Mm -hmm. like even in our standalone cottages that we have on our campus Mm -hmm. or or our apartments, you know, there's grab bars in the shower. You know, there's alert systems if you need an emergency. You know, there's, you know, turning radiuses and and, and ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. So again, the purpose of, you might not need these things today, but as again, as you age in place, think about living in your own home. If you try to stay in your own home, you know, if you've been in a home the last 30 or 40 years trying to get that compliant to fit a walker, a wheelchair, a scooter, right, right. Um, you're doing major construction at that point. Um, well, and so our communities and, and those like us have taken those things into consideration yeah. to not just plan for today, but what's the future look like yes. as well. And you mentioned that uh, you guys have a call system. So mm-hmm. I know it, at the village, you guys have pendants and you have watches. Correct. Uh, so residents can choose. I just had a conversation with someone the other day, and their loved one was on the floor in their home in the middle of the woods for two days before they finally were able to break through to someone to get help. That is nightmarish. That's nightmarish. We so hear it all the time. So yes, we do, unfortunately. So I mean, preparing not just for where we're at today, but where we may be. And this this person that was on the floor was not someone that was like ninety something years old. They were uh, either late sixties or early seventies. So anything can happen, and Correct. we need to be looking ahead and preparing for that. Um, independent living. I another question that I get. Is, is this something that I have to pay out of pocket for? Yes. It is. It is. It is private pay. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that people uh, do afford it is to either, you know, they use their Social Security, they use their pension, but they also at some point are probably looking at, you know, what have they talked to their investor about and how can they pull from investments and things like that? You know, one of the things that I think is, unfortunate is a lot of people, and I'll use our community as an example, you know, you, for years, I drove past the village of Gainesville on my way to other jobs, Mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, oh, it takes a million billion dollars to live in a community like that. Yep, people think Um, that. And and all honestly, too, I didn't even know how big our community was until I actually worked there. Got in there. (laughs) Um, And, you know, once I got in there, I realized the affordability Yes. Um, you know, for our community, one of the beauties uh, of us, uh, and I know this is supposed to be a general conversation, so, um, <laughs> but it, it, I don't want it to turn into a village infomercial, but, and we're not alone in this. You know, we try to reach out across socio and economic 
uh, communities to to provide a solution for what they need across the board. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have stuff on my property. It's eight thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Um, yeah. But guess what? I also have stuff on my property that's twenty five hundred dollars a month. Yes. And when you incorporate the electric and the cable yes, and the internet and the water and the, water and the sewer yeah. uh, and a meal plan that allows you to dine in five different venues, mm -hmm. that's pretty reasonable. And it's, it's probably not great. far off what you're getting today if you was to go buy a condo or even yeah. rent a condo outside. Yeah. So if you sit down with a paper and a pen and you clearly outline what all the costs are to live in your home, as opposed to, you know, the $2,500 a month that it may cost to live at the village um, or some of our other places, um, it, it really does come out to be the same. And some for some people, when I've sat down with paper and pen, we realize it's actually a little bit less. So um, – I. I think it's important to do your homework and to kind of be preparing an independent living is a great step and so far from a nursing home. It, so. it, it is. Again, <laughs> I know it's cliche, but we all use it. Um, you know, it's, it's basically like going on a cruise ship. For sure. The only thing we're missing is a casino. And I'm sure there's a lot of residents that live in the village that uh, would love if we had a casino. <laughs> I think that there are some card games and stuff there, that there, are being there played. Is some you card might not games. be privy to it, but I've you, heard. You know, but you know, as you're doing <laughs> your investigations and you're doing your research on what's the best place for you or your loved one, you know, ask, you know, it, it's not about the features. You know, every community has features on it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, everybody has bells and whistles to showcase. But mm -hmm. you really drill down and, and ask yourself. I'm paying this amount of money. Um, how is it benefiting me? How does it benefit me to have five dining venues? How does it benefit me from having a pool? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and if you're somebody that's never going to use a pool, then the answer is it doesn't. And so mm -hmm. those are all questions you've got to ask yourself as you're navigating through that process. Yeah. And, and hopefully um, you land to a, a place that, that it can be your forever home. Yeah. I like it. Well, thank you so much, Wayne, for My taking pleasure. the time to come out. And if you ever go and visit Wayne at the village, um, he's asked for uh, Diet Coke, orange M&Ms, and um, what, peanut peanut M&Ms? Yes. Peanut M&Ms. Am I, am I the first person that gave you a rider? Yes, yes, you Same are the mind. first person that gave me a rider. But you gave it to me too late, so uh, I didn't know. I still showed up. I, I didn't have your orange M&Ms or your, or your Diet better. Coke. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming, My Wayne. Pleasure. If you haven't subscribed, please take the time to do that now um, and like and share. And I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much.